Hello guys, it's me, Clarence, here at Revoke Studio. Today we're going to go over a couple more events with the Ruby Unsung Timeline. I didn't want to make it known that this series is going to be darker than the original show, but I didn't just make it edgy for the sake of edge. It's actually to make it more grounded and to give the lore a little bit more spice. But then once you think about it, the entire first season, first few seasons of the show, is actually a race war between humans and animal people, so... Yeah, I mean, that's already pretty bad. So we're actually going to start on the third month of year seven AGW, where Vale was shaken up by the deaths of Team Kale. Now, Team Kale was one of the premier huntsmen groups in Vale. They were seen as some of the best and brightest of the first generation of huntsmen. The members of the group consisted of Kane, Angel, Leo, and Eric, and they function as huntsmen for only three years before the group went missing on an assignment. It was later confirmed that the group was killed by a Nevermore. The deaths of the premier team created a sobering effect for the citizens of Vale, who were over romanticizing being a huntsman. But this did kinda calm that down a bit. That same year, in month 8, the global refugee reform started. And this was a global initiative suggested by the headmaster of Shade Academy in Vacuo. The initiative would offer increased protections to faunas, nomads, and refugees. The initiative was targeted to stop Ill the illegal trade of faunas from the slavers and would give huntsmen the authority to engage and arrest uh, confirmed slavers. This would also mean that the academies would include policing policies uh, to the already extensive huntsman training and certification. The Academy in Vale, Vacuo, and Mistro agreed to the reform, while Atlas refused. They already started to integrate their academy into their military. The GRR, or Global Refugee Reform, would make it illegal to forcefully transport people without just cause, and that's any person, group, or human, or faunist, without the express written consent of the government and proper licensing. This also established faunist reservations in each continent that faunist refugees could go to if they desired, but by no means were required to even if they didn't want to live in Menagerie. The reservations would be self-governed, but would have the protection of the closest respective kingdom. In addition, refugees would be able to obtain full citizenship through government-issued tests. In the 11th month of the 7th year, AGW, the cross-continental transmit system was complete. The cross-continental transmit system project was delayed seven years due to the rising of the anti-CCTS movement and the domestic terrorism those groups incited. The rise in violence led many in Vacuo and the volatile Mistral to drag their feet in the completion of their towers. Once the towers were complete and the system could finally launch, the first transmission was heard by all countries at the same time. The voice heard on the first ever transmission was that of the King Owen Strostas Xander Arona or the King of Vale. Launch of the CCTS was met with mixed reaction from most. The launch was accompanied with the issuance of a government issued identification initiative and mantle which saw the first scrolls being produced as a new form of communication and to act as a means for huntsman academies to communicate freely with one another. The towers would stay powered for three days before being taken offline for two days for adjustments, after which the CCTS was open to the public. The first transmission from King Owen was a saying, which he said, With this, we enter a new age in which all voices can be heard. On the fourth month of the eighth year AGW, the capital of Mantle was moved to Atlas. Because of the major economic boom and massive leaps in technology caused by both the Schnee Dust Company's R&D department and the Atlas Academy, the capital was officially moved to Atlas. The move to Atlas also saw a greater divide in classes not seen since the fall of the oligarchy. A gentrification campaign sought to remove undesirables from the street of Atlas. Increased backing from the wealthy families of Atlas saw an increased policing in the city which drained resources that was previously used across Mantle. Ghettos in Mantle grew increasingly unsafe as job scarcity due to overpopulation caused by Atlas increasing the cost of living to rid the lower class families. The problems became worse as large companies started hiring faunas at a fraction of the cost. 
To alleviate tension and to offer more jobs to the public, the council voted to the Atlas Militarization Act. The bill was extremely controversial as it would combine the Atlas, Huntsman Academy, and the military. The supposed reason for the bill was to give the large number of retired soldiers from the Great War Huntsman licenses so they could continue to serve and make money. They would only need to take the basic combat classes to ensure they could still fight. This would also mean that Atlas Huntsmen were also given military ranks and benefits. On the sixth month of the same year, the world was shocked by Samuel Slaughterhouse, a secret Faunus extermination group that kidnapped Faunus and slaughtered them in droves. Samuel's Lumberyard Co. was a front company that was exposed thanks to a whistleblower named Bally. The corporation was quickly disbanded by order of the King of Vale and those responsible faced life imprisonment. The group was exposed thanks to the cross-continental transmit system, which Bally used to record the actions of the members of the corporation. Bally was actually given pardon for informing the King of Vale and the world the horrendous actions that went down there. This was intended to reward her for a good deed, but it would soon come under fire. It was revealed later by Fauna's prisoners that Valley was not the whistleblower. Her device was stolen from her by one of the prisoners. The true whistleblower was a Fauna's named Hansel. Valley was allegedly a member of the Children of Light and several other anti-government groups. Tensions between humans and Fauna's continued to rise because it seemed like legal action against Valley went slower than the Fauna's believed it should have, as the king wished to have a proper investigation into the allegations against Valley. While several investigations were underway, Hansel went missing and was supposedly killed by the Children of Light. When the investigation against Valley concluded, it was corroborated that Valley was in fact the whistleblower and she had no connection with any extremist groups and her pardon remained intact. It was believed that the story of Hansel may have been fabricated to spread discourse between the King of Vale and the Faunus. On the 8th month of the 9th year AGW, the official liquidation of the royal and noble powers took place in Vale. The King of Vale, Owen Strosis Xander Arona IX, per the vital treaty, relinquished the power of the crown and the nobility of Vale. The ruling of the kingdom fell on the council whose members were elected in the first ever election in Vale. The former king of Vale will remain as the headmaster of Beacon. The noble families also lost their power and the ability to govern the villages in their domain as they became property of the new central government. And this change led to pushback from the former nobles which threatened to start a rebellion. A concession was made that the government would compensate the families of the former nobility from taxes collected in any village in their domain. In addition, all maintenance, development, and defense of their domain would be covered expenses by the central government. I know that this is a shorter video today guys, but I'm trying to make these videos shorter anyway. So thanks for watching. Please leave a like, you know, share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to see more, the best way to keep up is to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so that you're notified. Uh, and yeah, have a good day. Oh, wait, no, before I go and before I forget, the update on the game we're developing, Firebrand, is going to be pushed back to tomorrow since, you know, this video is coming out today. Um, but yeah, take a look at that if you don't know what I'm talking about with developing a game We have a couple of videos you can watch and I'll put them in the playlist here. Thanks again guys. Have a good one